the first one you want to read is that one, the third. Yeah. Well, that's a... But you say that, but I want, that isn't the card I want. The card I want you say is third, didn't you? No, no. Oh, you that point. Point. oh I take this card in the first section of the next card. Two cards. Two cards in the section of the third. All right. Okay. Oh, okay. Then I stop. All right. All right. The most immediate need of Europe is munitions and equipment. Now, let me ask you one thing. Do you want me to, when I get a chance to look? The most immediate need of Europe is munitions and equipment. Every one of the continental nations I visited can rapidly and markedly increase its resistance power if it can be promptly furnished additional supplies of this kind. To fill this need, our loyal neighbor Canada, with Britain and others, is shouldering part of the load. With every increase in strength, there will be an upward thrust in morale, resulting in an ever-mounting spiral of confidence and security. With respect to time, no man can know at what hour, if ever, our defensive organization may be put to the ultimate test. Because our purpose is entirely defensive, we must be ready at the earliest possible moment. Only an aggressor uh, could name the day and hour of attack. Our current mobilization, properly adjusted to peaceful security needs, should be as rapid as any required by the emergency of war. I believe, first, the preservation of free America requires our participation in the defense of Western Europe. Second, success is attainable. Given unity and spirit and action, the job can be done. Third, while the transfer to Europe of American military units is essential, our major and special contribution should be in the field of munitions and equipment. If Frenchmen can rise to the heights their fathers achieved at Verdun in 1916, if Italians can recapture the fervor of Vittorio Veneto, if British can relive the days of 1940 when they stood alone against Hitler, if our other allies can read to today's threats in the mode of their own revered patriots, if we have in America can match the courage and self-sacrifice of the ragged, freezing members of Washington's army at Valley Forge, indeed, if each of us now proves himself worthy of his countrymen fighting and dying in Korea, then success is sure a glorious success that will bring us security, confidence, tranquility. Each of us must do his part. We cannot delay, nationally or individually, while we suspiciously scrutinize the sacrifices made by our neighbor and through a weaseling logic seek some way to avoid our own duties. If we Americans seize the lead, we will preserve and be worthy of our own past. Our children will dwell in peace they will dwell in freedom. They will read the history of this decade with tingling pride and from their kinship with this generation 
they will inherit more than can be expressed in millions, in acres, or in world acclaim. If we join in a common understanding of our country's role today and wholeheartedly devote ourselves to its discharge, the year 1951 may be recorded in our history in letters as bright as is written the year 1776. Right. If Frenchmen can rise to the heights their fathers achieved at Verdun in 1916, if Italians can recapture the fervor of Vittorio Veneto, if British can relive the days of 1940 when they stood alone against Hitler, if our other allies can react to today's threat in the mode of their own revered patriots, if we here in America can match the courage and self-sacrifice of the ragged, freezing members of Washington's army at Valley Forge, indeed, if each of us now proves himself worthy of his countrymen fighting and dying in Korea, then success is sure, a glorious success that will bring us security, confidence, tranquility. General Dwight D. Eisenhower speaks at the Pentagon, February the 2nd, 1951. I believe that military service must be performed by all young men as an obligation to the country. Now as a soldier, as a commander, it makes little difference to me whether the Congress sends these boys to the Army when they're 18 or when they're 19. But the young America deserves training to meet the crises that recur with each generation in our country. As an educator, as a college president, I felt that 18 was a better year than 19 because I thought it accomplished less interference with his educational and industrial life. 